Chapter 6. The Animatic. An animatic is defined as a series of images played in sequence, often with a soundtrack. In essence, it's an animated storyboard. Okay, well, I just copied and pasted that from somewhere I found on the internet. That seems to be correct. So let's look at our pipeline here again. Remember, this is our animation pipeline. Script all the way to the final here. And uh, in last episode, I decided to focus on keyframes and designs. And if you recall, I ended up with uh, some character designs here that were kind of extrapolated from the layouts. I mean, I think that was a worthwhile episode because I, I kind of do like this uh, female character. I think she's going to work. And this idea of putting Keith Richards in, you know, as the main character is Peter. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I, I kind of like the idea. I mean, I, I've been reading the Keith Richards autobiography. It's called Life. It's not like this is just a random thing. I, I've been kind of thinking about Keith Richards for the last little while. I mean, having said that, I think uh, for me to, to push any further with the layouts is kind of putting the cart before the horse. And I, I know I kind of ran into a bit of a stumbling block there as I was moving forward. I kind of felt like I was moving forward on the production without really having like a, a solid uh, plan in place in terms of the animatics. So I, I took a step backwards. In the last week, uh, I've been focusing on the, um, and the storyboard and the edit. The storyboard, I'm going to take the storyboard frames into uh, Adobe Premiere. That's the editing program I use. And so the things that I'm going to uh, be working with in, the, in this edit are the storyboard frames, which I've already prepared, a bunch of JPEGs in a folder. I, I've recorded some scratch track. That, that's just me basically reading the script. And I had some music um, from Dave Nunez, who's also known as Anitech. So all these things uh, are going to uh, create the finish animatic uh, at the end of the day. So basically, in this uh, episode, I'm going to go from storyboard to animatic, which I think is a kind of a very significant sort of step forward. Now, the first thing we need to do is, um, let me just hide this window here. I have the master suite, the Adobe master suite, so I got a few different versions of the Premiere here. I'm going to open up Adobe Premiere. I'm going to uh, start a new project. You know, there's, there's a bit of technical stuff uh, that we have to get right here. And I, I talked to uh, Dan, the editor, uh, the editor that I've been working with uh, for a while in regards to setting up a new project. So I'm just going to share that with you right now. Okay, so we want to um, give this project a title. This is per minute damage 001. Here's the Adobe Premiere uh, interface right here. I'm going to go uh, File, New, Sequence. And this will give me a, a series of presets. I'm going to go to Ari, 1080, 24 frames. I'm going to hit OK. Now, uh, this is 1920 by 1080. Uh, I want to double the um the sequence settings so it's a higher resolution you can see this is 1920 by 1080 right here so um i could probably do this math in my head but i just wanted to show you the math on this let's just double 1920 1920 times two equals 3840 3840 it's almost 4k and then 1080 1080 times 2 equals 2160. 2160. 24 frames a second. 48,000 hertz. The, the video previews will be at 1920 by 1080. These are just like the proxy previews here. So I think we're good to go. That's the technical stuff. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is I am going to import the audio track. Now I've got everything um, kind of organized. My permanent damage folder, edit. And this is my audio track. I, I haven't labeled it, but I know this is my audio track. Let's just drag this in here. This entire clip here 
is uh, 13 minutes long. You know, that's just the, the read-through of the script. Uh, this could be louder, actually. Let's go, like, another plus five. Permanent damage. Okay, I, I'm just going to do some trimming on this edit here. Let's, let's get the razor blade, cut it, get rid of it, click here, ripple delete, and that'll shuffle everything down. Permanent damage. Okay, now I'm going to just go from start to finish, and I'm going to um, basically cut out all, all the breaths and all the bad takes in there. Fade up from black to... There's a little click right there right there just all these little incidental sounds that come in those weird little smacking sounds ripple delete and then we're just going to keep going through the whole uh, voiceover clip I finished trimming all the unnecessary stuff out of, out of this uh, VO track right here the end result of doing that first pass through the audio if you recall I was at 13 minutes before now we are at about uh, seven minutes and, and a, seven and a half minutes. So I almost cut the audio down by half. And that's about the right pocket for this little short. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in my storyboard frames. Here they are right here. Uh, so I just selected them all, dragged them into this uh, video layer here. It just defaults um, to five seconds for each frame. Uh, now, I'm just going to shuffle that stuff down a little bit. I like to have some room to work with. Okay, let's squish this thing down. So now let's get into some uh, editing the uh, voiceover to my storyboard frames. Permanent damage. Let's turn it up here. Okay, permanent damage. Black frames right here. I got probably more black frames there than I need. Let me just find my Cintiq bed. Okay, there it is. Okay, go in here, go. Ripple delete, go there, okay. Permanent damage. Okay. At this stage, anything I could do to like cut out frames uh, I think it's a good thing. Let's right click on that. Scale the frame size. All right, permanent damage. Here we go. Permanent. Per. per. The explosion of the P. Let's try it there. So it sounds like the title of the film pops on when he says that. Permanent damage. Muffled. Um, Muffled. Mm. Damage. Muffled sounds echo in the distance. And basically what I'm doing is I'm describing sound effects here, which which is, it's only going to be a place card that I'll replace later, but I, it just sort of gives me a time block to work with here. Muffled sounds echo in the distance, slowly growing louder, becoming increasingly clearer until Peter, 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 for... Oh, so Peter, <laughs> Peter is kind of snapped back into reality. Peter, Peter, Peter. Whoa, okay, now he's back. For Christ's sake, you drifted off again. So. Okay. Let's just drag. I like, I like having a little bit of room here to play around with. That's why I'm dragging these frames down. <laughs> Suddenly, Peter sucked back in again to consciousness. <laughs> I mean, for now, I, I think it's nice to have these frames uh, changing uh, on each phrase. He finds himself behind the wheel of a car. He swerves back into his own lane, nearly missing a collision. This little thing that gives you like a kind of a, a, a closer and further look of the edit, that's very useful. I use that quite a bit. Someone's yelling at him, telling him to learn how to drive. He looks over at Randy, sitting in the passenger seat. Peter, what the fuck? Randy's looking at him with that scornful look. Peter is a hap. Peter. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 
I always go for the louder sound when I do the cut. Right there at the beginning. Let's see how that looks. Peter is a ha Peter is a hab. Okay. I want kind of want to have a slow push in on Peter's head here as this uh, bit of voiceover is happening. I guess that was the intention. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is select the clip that I want to put the uh, f uh, camera effects on. I go up to here. You see these two clock things? One is position, one scale. This is the first frame of the scene. I'm going to click both of those key frame. Uh, now let's go to the end of the scene, to the last frame, right there. And this time you're just going to hit these two key frames here. Now this is all happening behind uh, this, you know, my viewing window right here. It's not ideal, but I mean, it's just the way I have it set up right now. But you can sort of see this is the timeline here behind it. Okay. This is your effects timeline. So I, I think the way I had imagined this, I, you see I'm selecting both those two keys. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go temporal interpolation and go ease out, ease out of these two keys right there. So it's going to slow out of those first two keys. Uh, did I want to slow it at the end? Maybe I'll keep it linear because he's kind of being interrupted at the end. So that seems to make more sense. Let's have a look. Look, Peter is a hat. Oop, I, I haven't set the, the last two keys in there yet. Okay, these are the two keys. Make sure I got them. On uh, the frame right here. Okay, so let's set these two keys. Zooming in slowly to his head. That's basically it. Let's go back to the beginning. Peter, what the fuck? Randy's looking at him with that scornful look. Peter has a habit of staring off into space. Sometimes he drifts off right in mid-conversation, leaving everyone hanging. It's a bit awkward for people listening to have the conversation just... Peter. <laughs> I also want to do a opacity control. I'm going to hit it to set the first key. Boom. It's going to be right there. You can see. Uh, I set the first key right here. I go to uh, that's 100%. Let's go to the end of the scene right here. This time you will just want to hit the that little dot right there. Add keyframe. Select this. Hit zero. Black. Zero opacity means it's gone transparent. And I got nothing underneath. Peter has a habit of staring off into space. Sometimes he drifts off right in mid-conversation, leaving everyone hanging. It's a bit awkward for people listening to have the conversation just Peter. Okay, the next frame. Let's bring this one down. Make sure that's happening right on the Peter, Peter. Peter, Peter. Peter. Right there. Better. Peter, Peter. Peter, Peter. Peter, you're doing it again. Okay. So you get the idea. I'm basically using the voiceover as kind of a, a guide for timing out the timing out the the length of the uh of the jpegs that i'm bringing in i'm going to just continue doing that through the whole length of the edit um and i'm going to uh kind of speed through that because it you know you, you kind of get the idea okay so here's my edit and now i'm going to import some music so um, I just happen to have a musician uh, who's, a, who's a buddy of mine. I've worked with him quite a few times before. His name is uh, Dave Nunez, and he's uh, otherwise known as Annie Tech. He did some music for Parasiter and Cigarettes, and I just always really found that Dave's music works really well with my animation. It's got a nice sort of cinematic quality to it. It's kind of got a kind of a dark... Uh, almost a filthy kind of sound to it, which I kind of like, uh, you know, 
kind of like the crunchy darkness, I guess. It's my personal taste. Let's give this first one a listen. Okay, that's going to be good. Okay, so I have an idea where that might work. Let's drop that onto its own level here. Let's rename some of these uh, uh, columns. We'll call this one music. We'll call this one VO. VO. And can I rename this one? Okay, so let's kind of try to line this up a bit. First thing we need to do, I was thinking it might kind of work here in this section. And this time we see it from his point of view. Images and sounds drift in and out of the static. Just a little loud. Uh, audio gain. Minus three. Okay. Just like tuning into a radio station. Okay, that's almost already sinking. Let's see that again. Out of the static, just like tuning. Okay, right there. All right. So let's line that up with um, that frame where we're cutting out of the black. Right there. Yep. Drag this over here. Peter slips away, and this time we see it from his point of view. Images and sounds drift in and out of the static, just like tuning into a radio station. Suddenly, Peter dials into a house party. Peter's with his buddy Darren. They enter the house party, and all sorts of chaos unfolds before them. They are just about to start tripping. They step over a fellow who's passed out on the stairs. Strands of spaghetti and barf drape from his open mouth all the way down the stairs. Still a little loud. I like it though. Audio gain minus two. And you reduce the overall volume of that. Okay. I see it from his point of view. Images and sounds drift in and out of the static, just like tuning into a radio station. Suddenly, Peter dials into a house. Okay. Now we could hit some of the. The, the, the beats in there. It's always nice to sort of cut on the beat. Let's try to find one. There it is. You can see the waveform right there. The music has sort of a rhythm like you're walking. Which might work nicely with the animation there. Peter's with his buddy Darren. Buddy Darren. They enter the house party and all sorts of party. And I think, you know, once you open the door, that's when everything goes a little kind of heavy here. Because uh, it's, you know, it's supposed to be kind of disturbing, this party, you know? Peter's with his buddy Darren. So let's try it again. Peter dials into a house party. Peter's with his buddy Darren. They hit me, Darren. They It was almost there anyways. There. It's one frame. To a radio station. Suddenly Peter dials into a house party. And Peter's with his buddy Darren. They enter the house party and all sorts of chaos unfolds before them. They are just about to start tripping. They step over a fellow who's passed out. But the chaos unfolds before them. They are just about to start tripping. What happens if we make that sink on the beat there? And all sorts of chaos unfolds before them. They are just about to start tripping. They step over a fellow who's passed out on the stairs. Strands of spaghetti and barf drink from his open mouth. Let's put a camera move on it. Let's set two keys. It's going closer. Set the first frame right here. And go a little wider. Okay, and then we go to the end of the scene. 
Let's set two more keys. And then pan the camera. Uh, f following the vomit down the stairs. Like this. Okay, let's see how that looks with the music. Let's start from the beginning. To slight tune to a radio station. Suddenly Peter dials into a house party at night. Peter's with his buddy Darren. They enter the house party and all sorts of chaos unfolds before them. They're just about to start tripping. They step over a fellow who's passed out on the stairs. Strands of spaghetti and barf drink from his open mouth all the way down the staircase. It's a disturbing, unjust scene. Things get even more twisted. The fight breaks up. It's a little loud. Let's go another audio game, minus two. Okay. The fight breaks out in the kitchen. Someone else lets a fart from the butt and shoots out a jet of flame and the fight to take it in the fire. That's nice the way that music changes a little bit, that little interlude when the girl comes up there. Hmm. Is it better to have the cut on the beat or when that music fades up? I think it's okay on the beat. And then she, the kind of the way the music changes, that sound there, it's kind of the sound of her coming closer. Oh yeah, that hit that beat. That clapping sound. Only one frame off. I got it pretty close here with the uh, voiceover already. That's what I said, you know, Dave's stuff, just, you just put it in and it just seems to work. Oh yeah. Oh, another clap. Okay. Suddenly, Peter gets pulled into the bed by a couple of young ladies. They tumble recklessly in the darkness. It's absolute mayhem, but Peter's having a lucky grazing. Oh. The app. I don't like doing this, but I have to cut Dave's music. Let's try repeating this music again. I kind of like this song. Let's try repeating it. Select it. Control C. Control V. Where is it? It's up here. Pull it down. And let's move that. This is just some extra dialogue I didn't want to throw out, so I just kept it on the timeline. All right, I'm going to do a mix of some sort. The door closes right here. Right there. They tumble recklessly. Mm -hmm. that right on the beat where the door closes right here boom okay suddenly Peter gets pulled into the bedroom by a couple of young ladies they tumble recklessly okay let's save this I'm gonna ask Dave to do this properly I don't want to mess with the music but I'm just kind of sectioning it out in a way that'll help to make it work and then give Dave like a pretty accurate idea how to how to work this. Okay, this episode's already getting pretty long. I'm gonna have to cut it here and then continue this uh, animatic uh, in part two of the next episode.